So I'm in the middle of the couch again. That means that we have to talk. And the first thing I need to do, maybe for the first time ever, is start the video with an apology. Because for the last couple of days, on Twitter and on my streams on Twitch, I've been kind of downplaying some people's main concerns about some of these Walking Dead cards they've been rolling out over the last few days now. And I have to say, uh, first of all, that I'm sorry because every single one of you was correct. All of your deepest fears were 100% valid. So why did I feel the way I originally did about this? And then why did I come around on it? Which I think is the more important question. There's a lot to talk about in that vein. But as far as my initial feelings on this, a few reasons to answer that. I try to stay away from reactionary content as much as I can. I like to take a couple of days to stew on it, marinate, and come up with my own opinions, apart from my initial knee-jerk reaction to a thing. I like to absorb other people's opinions and takes. There might be information or thoughts that I hadn't considered, right? So I think that's an important part of the equation, too. I just like to have as much information as I can before I finally come to a conclusion on a thing. So when I see, you know, reactionary takes that are just basically like, the most doomer, cynical, sardonic takes you can possibly imagine. Um, I tend to mock those because very often in the first 24 hours or so of a decision, um, people will just take things to their logical extreme rather than even their logical conclusion. And I always think that that's bad for lots of reasons. But in this case, in this case, again, a lot of these cynics, um, who would call themselves realist. In this case, I guess score one for realism. Uh, we're 100% correct about their takes. But another reason I haven't really had much to say about this, and the stuff that I have had to say about it, has been, you know, wrong um, so far, I guess. And I haven't really invested much, you know, thought into it just yet. Is because, and this sounds like a cop-out answer, but it is the absolute truth. And you know what I'm talking about, fellow Americans? Over the last seven days, the news cycle itself, outside of Magic the Gathering, has been just crazy event after crazy event. It's been a diaper fire of news. And so I've, I've felt all of my emotional energy go to that. And I just haven't mustered the strength to be, you know, upset about a Walking Dead lair drop. Especially in the beginning. This is kind of where things begins to turn. Especially in the beginning, where even though these cards are going to be you know, legacy legal, eternal format legal, if you hadn't heard that, they, they are, which is a bad decision, even if the cards are trash. But, you know, my, my justification at the time for not really caring was that the cards that they had previewed didn't look very good. Right? I mean, Michonne is not good. Negan's not good. I promise you guys, Negan is not legacy playable. I don't know why people keep thinking it is. And then um, Daryl, which is probably the worst looking one. Uh, Daryl looks so awful to me. But if you want to play with Norman Reedus, the Death Stranding guy, I guess you can. But this is a stinker of a card. So I just didn't think any of them looked good enough for legacy or even really commander play. Did everyone forget how busted even some budget commanders are? You know, like not everyone plays with the best commander in the world. People like to play with fun commanders. Don't get me wrong, but like there are tons and tons of commanders way more broken with this that you see a lot at the commander table and at the time my thought was oh you probably won't see too many of these at the commander table to begin with especially if they're not very good and we hadn't seen very good ones but then they previewed glenn okay first of all glenn doesn't look good to me all right this is where i started making some of the takes that i started making <laughs> on twitter because honestly this is this is a three mana Boltable, do nothing when it ETBs, Ophidian. That is not legacy playable. And I saw some people screaming at the sky, though, oh, you just throw a Jate on this and you're drawing a bunch of cards and it's really good. And I just, I don't know, man. I don't know if that's true. Honestly, if people forget the power level of legacy the same way I feel like some people forgot the power level of commander on the average day. So I didn't think Glenn looked very good at all. <laughs> it's like a draft uncommon in the modern age of magic. Forget, forget how much power has crept over the last few years, guys, in terms of creature design, at least. So I just wasn't very impressed by Glenn as a card, and I definitely don't think still that it's legacy playable. So I did some mocking of people on Twitter, and I think that, again, was wrong, because ultimately, the argument people kept throwing back at me was, yeah, maybe these cards are good. Maybe Glenn isn't even good. But one day, they keep doing this? Maybe. There will be a card that's too good. Maybe there will be a card that's too good, and it's effectively like a, a second reserve list. They print cards like this, 
And they're only available for a very short print run. You only have a week to buy this Walking Dead secret lair, by the way. And if any of these cards become playable in especially Commander or Legacy, then suddenly the price shoots up. There's absolutely no availability. And online vendors that do have them get to sell them for a billion dollars. Right? And at the time I thought, well, yeah, that makes sense. But I'm not going to go crazy until we actually see a card that's playable in that way. Maybe Wizards has learned some lessons, right? I mean, people kept bringing up the buy a box promo. How Firesong and Sunspeaker was the first buy a box promo. Nobody cared. They hit the nail on the head in terms of design. Um, and then Nexus of Fate was the next buy a box promo. And uh, remember how that went. And yeah, good enough, good enough. But I felt like Wizards, and this is, this is where I screwed up. And I will fully admit that I screwed up. This is where... <laughs> this is where Wizards had the chance. If I, if I laugh at myself saying it right now. Wizards had the chance to learn a lesson. Let's see, from Nexus of Fate. Um, and at the time, I thought they did. Right? <laughs> but, but it turns out... It turns out that we're not even going to have to wait until, like, the next time they do a secret lair with legacy legal IP, commander legal IP. Or the next time, or the time after that, or the time after that, we're not going to have to wait two years for a secret lair drop with an extremely legacy playable card to come out, or, or commander card for that matter. Uh, it turns out it's just in this set, you know, <laughs> earlier today, uh, way earlier today as I record this. <sighs> they release Rick, um, a magic card named Rick. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> anyway, they, they released Rick, and Rick is very commander playable. Uh, very commander playable. Now, I don't think that this is legacy playable or anything, and I'll really, I will really poop myself. Uh, I wish, wish, wish YouTube would let me say stuff and still monetize videos. But I would, uh, I would, I would need a change of underpants. Uh, if they actually printed something like very, very legacy playable in this batch of cards, and again, no, I don't, I don't think legacy, I don't think Glenn's legacy playable. Uh, but this is, at the very least, a card that a lot of Commander players are going to want. Whether it's for their Soldier's deck, because it's a, apparently a Soldier. Um, just is a Soldier. Uh, and, and for Humans decks, for that matter. Uh, because this is really good. Even if they chopped off the second bit of text on the card, and it just had the first thing where you choose two of these abilities and give them to all your Humans, that would be, like, a little concerning. But they throw this on here. Uh, that's... Oh God. And it's not even, like, other Humans... It's just humans, so he gets the bonus too. Like, it's really pushed. It is so pushed for these, like, small aggro humans decks uh, in Commander. And it's, I just, mm, that's bad. That's so bad. Uh, that's that's not good, because kind of part of my entire argument not only hinged on the fact that none of these cards were particularly playable or good-looking or anything, uh, but that they probably would not do that. They, if they're going to make them legacy playable... They're probably not going to make them actually legacy playable, right? But no, no, no. Um, there's a there's a scene in Jackie Brown where Samuel Jackson is talking to Robert De Niro about Bridget Fonda. And Robert De Niro says to Sam, like, do you trust her? And Sam Jackson says, no, I don't trust her, but I trust her to be her. I, sh I should have remembered that scene. Uh, you got to trust wizards to be wizards. And um, in the modern age, <laughs> in the modern age, they're going to uh, make money. They're going to make that money. And the, the sad thing about it is that they could have made this silver bordered or something. They could have made this not commander or legacy playable. Um, and they could have made the cards trash. Like every single card could be absolutely trash. And this would still sell a lot. You know, Walking Dead is still a very watched show. I know you don't watch it. Neither do I. Um, but it's still a very popular show, and it's one of the biggest shows, shows of all time. And it probably will bring new people into this product, you know, on October the 4th, which is like a day and a half as I release this. Um, at like 11 p.m. on October 4th, uh, they're going to do an episode of The Talking Dead where they preview the entire contents of the secret layer box. And that's probably going to be watched by like 4 million people. Um... <laughs> it's a lot of people. So this is going to sell like hotcakes, even to people who like don't play Magic or don't play Magic currently. It's like, oh, I played Magic 15 years ago and I haven't played in forever, but this is cool. I'll buy this product because I watch Walking Dead. There are people in the world like that. Um, so it's going to sell. I mean, regardless of what like we say about it, it's, it's going to sell. And some people will have this. 
Um, so, so, so now, so now, again, uh, learning that I should have trusted wizards to be wizards. I should have known. I should have known. And again, I'm sorry. Uh, I should have known that we weren't going to have to even wait until like the next secret layer or the next one or anything to get a hype card. Here it is. Here's Rick. Here's Rick. And yeah, like, why did it have to be the Walking Dead? Like, why? If you're going to do this, like, and make it legacy playable or whatever, it had to be the Walking Dead. It had to be the Walking Dead. Like, just couldn't get the HBO deal in time to do a Game of Thrones thing like two years ago or whatever. It had to be the Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and I get, look, there's... Another reason that in the last couple of days I haven't really taken this very seriously is that like when people make the the pickle Rick argument, like oh I can't wait till there's a pickle Rick card, and you waka waka. Um, which the professor said this uh, both on Twitter and in a video. And if you haven't seen professor's video on this, um, watch it. It's I'll leave a link in the description. Very good takes. Uh, some in, some information I hadn't considered before, like how hard it is for foreign markets to get this, and even some of the foreign markets that can get this, how expensive it is for them after shipping and handling and all that. It's um distributing fees. So yeah, there were some things I didn't take into consideration that do make this really bad in some ways, for, especially for foreign markets. So watch his take, and if you haven't seen it also, I'll leave a link in the description to Vince's take, uh, Pleasant Kenobi. If you haven't seen his takes... Really good video he put together on that, discussing the Lathney Dragon and Mana Crypt and sort of the history of cards like this. Um, good video, although at some point I think he says that zombies aren't a good fit for magic, and he says it unironically, and like, who ever heard of zombies in magic? Um, but for the most part, these are both very, very good videos with a lot of interesting information in them, so check those videos out. Um, and it turns out that a lot of the concerns they raise in those videos have again absolutely come true. I think uh, just with, with the reveal of this Rick card, I am... But there's other stuff. There's other stuff that made me come around on this. Specifically, um, Aaron Forsyth and another member of the design team, was it Mike Hagen? Maybe that's his name? Um, I apologize for forgetting your name. If you're, if you're watching this video, I doubt it. But um, <laughs> in any case, they did an interview with uh, SCG where both of them said in various ways that they're looking to do this crossover IP more often. You know, Aaron Forsyth hopes that they can do it more often. Um, Hagen basically did, said the same thing. So, so something they're looking to do in the future, especially considering they know it's going to sell, man. It's going to sell like hotcakes. And to that end, I'm not sure because like there are a lot of people that, myself included, that would not mind seeing certain IPs on the commander table. And like your commander group can ban these if they want to. I know... The Commander Rules Committee decided not to ban these cards, which I... Look, I want to say it's a bad decision, but that's that's my personal feelings. Because, like, I don't want to face Rick Grimes in the Commander table. But, like, is that a good enough reason to keep them out in the end? I'm not actually sure. And I think that the actual announcement, if you read through it, from the Commander Rules Committee makes some very good points um, as to why they didn't ban these cards. Uh, but at the end of the day, I... Think they, I still think they probably should have, and I can't help but feel that way. But again, it's all personal feelings. Like, I wouldn't want to face Rick Grimes in the commander table, but I wouldn't mind facing. Jeez, there are some things. You know, I made this joke on Twitter, but I'm very serious. Like, if they did like a SquareSoft series and they made a card for Frog from Chrono Trigger, I would actually be like kind of excited. <laughs> I would actually kind of like fangirl out about that. So. You know, I mean, and that's kind of the one of the points of the Commander Rules Committee made. I think that put bullet point number two in their decision was that, you know, there's a lot of people that want to see their favorite IP um, in Magic, right? The thing is, I think you can do that. I think you can do that by making the cards silver bordered or you give them skins, right? This is something everyone's already suggested. You do the same thing you did with the Godzilla cards where one half, one, one part of the card or one side of it or whatever. It's a Godzilla card, you know, or it's a whatever, Sailor Moon card. I've seen people suggest that. And I would, honestly, I'd be down for that because my wife would be into it. My wife might actually play Magic if there was a Sailor Moon secret layer. And I've been trying to get my, my wife to play Magic for 11 years. So I would that would actually be kind of sweet. Um, but anyway, that's kind of the point I'm trying to make is that there's a lot of people who would maybe get into this, you know, game for the first time. If it would cross over with certain IPs, but you don't have to make them legal in Commander. You don't have to make them legal in Legacy or whatever. That just seems silly to me. Um, you can just make them silver-bordered 
And then like, or skins or whatever, and then casual players, which is, I still think the majority of Magic players, just play on weekends on the kitchen table or with their loved ones or whatever. Like you play Magic with your kids, you play Magic with your spouse, or with your roommates, you know, classmates, whatever. Friends, <laughs> keep going. Just at your card shop. But a lot of Magic play is still casual. And if casual groups decide, you know, hey, we like this IP, so we're going to include this. You can play with these cards, but you can't play with this other IP or whatever. That's up to them. And that seems perfectly fine. The same thing, like, the Commander Rules Committee cannot ban or ban anything they want to, but it's really up to your Commander play group what is or is not banned. And I think a lot of Commander play groups are going to end up banning these Walking Dead cards. Um, just as sort of the house rules, we used to call it, uh, kind of thing. And I think that's fine. That's, that's totally fine, right? Uh, the problem is, like, if you play Commander on, like, MTGO, and then suddenly you have to play against... Like Mega Man every game or something. It's play, it's, like, man, it's my third game against Sonic the Hedgehog as their commander, which, I mean, again, do I hate that? Yeah, I kind of I would hate. I kind of would hate that, actually. So, but, again, I think it's all up to personal feeling on that one. You know, what IP do you want in the game? What IP don't you want in the game? Should we just shut it all out? If we shut it all out, then does that mean there's there, there can't be a Dungeons & Dragons set? Or does that match up with the existing IP well enough already to where we can do a Dungeons & Dragons thing? Especially considering Wizards own both, owns both properties, so it makes a little bit more sense. There's a lot of considerations. Like, should they do? <laughs> My answer is absolutely not. You can see. I don't usually go rubbing my head so much in a video. Um, it's a lot going through my head, though. <clears throat> but should they do, like, a Harry Potter crossover with Strixhaven this, later this year? You know, the the wink-wink, nudge-nudge magic school expansion that they announced for later on in the year? No. Absolutely. Don't do it. Do not do a Harry Potter crossover with that. But I bet they will. I bet they will. I bet. God, don't do it. Please don't do that. But again, like, that's personal feelings, right? Like, that's... That's personal feelings, you know. Like that's that's just me not wanting to have a, a pair to see Harry Potter in a game of Magic. But you know, like I guess if they did skins, like God, if they did the Godzilla thing, but with Harry Potter cards and on Arena, like they they actually, you actually had to play against like Ron Weasley. Ah, oh, God, that would be bad. But like that's like, the personal feelings. There'd be so many people who are into Harry Potter that would be really down with that. And would open up the game to a whole new audience. And I'm always down for expanding the game's audience. I always think more Magic players is a good thing. But, like, I do think how you get there matters, man. <laughs> but at the same time, like, Wizards wants to make as much money as they want, as they can, right? That's their company. It's for their shareholders. And, God, I hate that takes so much. It just absolves a company of all ethical responsibility. But there is the question of how unethical this actually is, right? Just because a bunch of people hate it, does it make it unethical? Like, this is, a, this is a real question, you know? That's an interesting question to ask yourself. But I think enough Magic players hate this that they they, they really need to reverse direction. And, like, these secret layers aren't printed until, like, the until all the orders are filled out. Um, until all the orders are in and they stop taking orders. Then they print the secret layers. So they have time to fix this. They can turn these into skins if they want to. Um, where there's like a, opera, a functional magic card on the other half, right on the other side of it. Um, there's just like a magic card that has nothing to do with with um, The Walking Dead. Uh, they could do that the same, th the same way that we did with Godzilla cards. Or they could just do the, you know, silver bordered thing. You know, Professor also uh, proposes this solution in his video where they just, you know, they haven't even printed them yet. Just make them silver bordered. And I'm down with that. I think that that would probably be the best thing for Wizards to do. But, you know, is that going to is that gonna make as much money? I think it actually will in the long run. So I don't know why they wouldn't. But, like, more importantly, more importantly, I don't know why they would make the decision to just outright make these Legacy and Commander playable to begin with, like, right off the jump. That seems really obviously controversial. And it surprises me if they like didn't think it was going to be, but it, like you know, it obviously is, my dudes. Um, so you probably you probably shouldn't have done it in the first place. But at this point, you've still got plenty of time to fix it. So I guess to cap it all off here, I want to end by saying that we still have time to change Wizards' mind um, on this. And I'm just now joining the fight. A lot of you have already let them know how you feel about this, but I'm here. I'm here for you now. I'm I'm with your cause um, as of as of today. Because I think this is a little overboard. And we still have time not to change their mind about crossover IP. Because they're going to do that. They're going to do it. 
it's money. They will do it. I don't think we can change that, but we can probably still change their mind about how they're going to do it. These cards should be silver bordered. These cards could be skins, and I wouldn't mind that. I'm a little put off by it, to be honest with you. I still don't know how much I like that, but silver bordered is probably the way to go on these. Do not make the maternal format legal. I think that's silly. A lot of other people have already told you they do too. So, again, we're not going to change their mind on crossover IP, no matter how you feel about that. They smell the money, and there's a lot of it there. They smell it because it's there's, there's so freaking much of it. So, Wizards, go on and make your money. If you're going to do the frozen crossover or whatever wizard whenever professor was upset about um do it right go on go on and kiss the girl wizards do it but make sure that elsa isn't actually legacy playable or that sonic the hedgehog isn't a ridiculous commander that everyone has to have or whatever just just don't please don't do that wizards right i know it sounds like a boomer argument but it does cheapen the game an awful awful lot if you do that, if, you, if I sit down for a legacy event, which I've never done in my life, but legacy players, <laughs> legacy players take the game a little seriously, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> Even if I sit down at the commander table and I run up against, good Lord, I don't even, I don't even know at this point what, what to expect. <laughs> if, I, if I sit across from Dora the Explorer or something, I think that'll probably, that would probably cheapen my experience a little bit. So let them know how you feel, however you can do it, but remember, no hate or anything like that. To let them know how you feel, you don't have to hate. It doesn't have to be like an acidic, poisonous, vile thing that you spew at them. <laughs> Just, you know, take to all the various social media platforms and stuff. Let them know, whoever you are, that this is... The way you're going about this is bad, not just because it's a shameless cash, a shameless cash grab, but because it's almost impossible to justify making these cards legal in Commander and Legacy while also actually being playable. <laughs> not just legal, but playable. I don't see the reasoning behind it whatsoever, and you're probably going to lose some money doing it that way. Whereas if you just printed these cards silver bordered, you'd still get just as many orders on them. I promise you, you would. <laughs> People that are into The Walking Dead and want these cards... They'll order them. They will. Doesn't matter if the silver bordered or not. It really doesn't, guys. And like, <laughs> if you're gonna keep doing it, at least at least get a better justification. This is my last thing I want to say. During that SCG interview, one of them said, I can't remember if it was Forsyth or um Hagen, but one of them said that <laughs> they, I can't believe they actually did this. I almost feel bad because this feels like a line that a corporate person from Hasbro fed to one of them. I can't, there's no, I can't allow myself to believe one of them actually came up with this in their head and then said it to a person. This had to come from higher up. But one of them actually said like, Richard Garfield did this way back in the day with Arabian Nights. And it's like, you've got to get better arguments. <laughs> you've got to try harder than that. Um, because, whoo, <laughs> that was so... Wow, that was rancid. Um, but anyway, no one could, no one can take that seriously. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I, think, I think that's all I've got to say about this for now. Um, I've had so much that I've, 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 I've had to talk about this week. I'm like two days, three days late to the party on the Walking Dead thing. I haven't talked about the bands yet, which I probably really need to talk about. Um, but there is other content on the channel. Check that out if you haven't yet. We just did the Clerics deck tech. I'm really proud of that one. So check that one out. Hit me up on Twitch and watch me play Magic at SBMTG Dev over on Twitch TV. Or if you want to support the channel on Patreon, do that by going to patreon.com slash SBMTG. I need the dollars. But aside from that, I guess I'm done for this one. So I guess I'll catch you cats later. Do all the things. Like and subscribe. Did I ever tell you to do that? Like and subscribe. Um, and I'm sorry again. Again. I'm, I'm sorry for what were certainly bad takes at the beginning of all this. I apologize. I'll never do it again. I love you all. I'm Ben from the place. Thanks for watching, my wizards. Spread love and be kind.